Hello and welcome once more to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We've got quite an NVIDIA focused video for you today, as the bulk of our topics today are regarding NVIDIA, and the first of which is regarding their announcement of CUDA X HPC. So essentially, this is to give developers the tools needed to help them along their way to their next scientific breakthrough from everything from fluid dynamics and weather simulation to computational chemistry. We've got all sorts of domains being covered here. And CUDA X HPC is at its essence a collection of libraries, tools, compilers, and APIs that will help developers solve some very challenging problems. Now again, there is a bunch of high performance computing related features here and use cases including linear algebra, molecular dynamics, computational physics, all sorts. There is a full article from NVIDIA linked in the description below this video which goes over this in quite a lot of depth, some of which I'm not going to cover here because it's kind of outside the remit of this video, but we also have some GPU debugging and profiling developer tools included with NVIDIA Insight which is part of CUDA XHPC, as well as Insight Systems, a low overhead performance analysis tool which is very useful for helping developers identify bottlenecks and also we have Insight Compute which is a interactive kernel profiler for CUDA applications. Now I do have a bit of a statement here from NVIDIA regarding GPU accelerated libraries which reads quote NVIDIA GPU accelerated libraries provide highly optimized functions that perform two to ten times faster than CPU only alternatives. Using drop-in interfaces, you can replace CPU only libraries such as MKL, IPP, and FFTW with GPU accelerated versions with almost no code changes. The libraries can optimally scale your application across multiple GPUs. GPU accelerated libraries for linear algebra, signal processing, image and video processing lay the foundation for compute intensive applications in areas such as molecular dynamics, computational chemistry, medical image, imaging and seismic exploration. For deep learning, NVIDIA provides specialized libraries that are integrated with all the deep learning frameworks. With NVIDIA's libraries you get highly efficient implementations of algorithms that are regularly extended and optimized. So again, there's going to be some links in the description below this video if you're more interested in reading more about this, but that is pretty much the TLDR. Quite interesting, obviously not a thing to do with URI, but I love this sort of stuff. It's just, it's fascinating if nothing else, and I really look forward to seeing the results of their labours, which probably were not going to come from many years, but it's still going to be interesting nonetheless. But that's not the only announcement NVIDIA have for us, no, 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 as we also have them bringing CUDA to ARM. And again, this is a bit inside baseball because this is intended more for, well, it is intended for supercomputers. In fact, it's, an, it's for AI-enabled exascale supercomputers of all things. But NVIDIA announced today their support for ARM CPUs, and they're making available to the ARM ecosystem its full stack of AI and HPC software, which does actually include... CUDA X AI and HPC libraries, GPU accelerated AI frameworks, and other software tools like PGI compilers. And apparently, NVIDIA are going to accelerate all major CPU architectures, including x86, Power, and ARM. Now, I have a bit of a statement here from Jensen Huang himself, of course, the CEO of NVIDIA, who said, quote, Supercomputers are the essential instruments of scientific discovery, and achieving exascale supercomputing will dramatically expand the frontier of human knowledge. As traditional compute scaling ends, power will limit all supercomputers. The combination of NVIDIA's CUDA accelerated computing and ARM's energy efficient CPU architecture will give the HPC community a boost to exascale. ARM is working with our ecosystem to deliver unprecedented compute performance gains and exascale class capabilities to ARM based SOCs. Collaborating with NVIDIA, sorry, this is from Simon Seagar, should I say, CEO of ARM. Collaborating with NVIDIA to bring CUDA acceleration to the ARM architecture is a mal key milestone for the HPC community, which is already developed, deploying excuse me, ARM technology to address some of the world's most complex research challenges. And according to a list which actually was conveniently released today, NVIDIA actually powers 22 of the 25 most energy sufficient supercomputers. So while well, NVIDIA has not been having a great time as of late, when it, well at least not as good a time as they expected, I suppose just to clarify, when it comes to Turing, they are doing very, very well when it comes to supercomputers. And again, it is going to be really interesting to see what this combination of CUDA and ARM actually brings to the table. So we have our final NVIDIA related thing today, and it is actually not actually about supercomputers, guys. This is regarding the NVIDIA Shield. 
as it has been spotted today on the Google Play developer console, a new variant of the NVIDIA Shield, and it is going the under the code name, should I say, Madarsi, or M Darcy, just to be absolutely clear as to what I'm saying there. Now, just put this in some sort of context, the current model is nicknamed Darcy, so it's, maybe it's a small upgrade to this, given that it's literally just one letter different. Of course, it's obviously entirely possible this is literally just a typo, but we do have uh, some differences between the two hardware listings. The most prominent out of them is M Darcy actually runs Android 9 Pi, as it does list Android 9 SDK, However, it does have the same Tegra X1 T2110, sorry, T1, T210, there we go, I got there in the end, excuse me guys, it's been a long day, uh, listed as the current Shield TV, but obviously this is just a listing, this is by no means the confirmed specifications, it's highly possible that the hardware will actually change, it could very much be a placeholder, and we could see a new Tegra SoC uh, being listed in the future. It could even be an updated Terra, the Tegra SoC that perhaps, again, we just don't know anything about yet. There have been rumblings for a while, as I'm sure you recall, about a new version of the NVIDIA Shield. But let's assume that it is a refresh. What are NVIDIA trying to actually do here? Well, they're most likely trying to compete with Google Stadia, as of course that's going to be coming out quite soon. But it's entirely possible that, again, we are going to be seeing an update to the actual hardware itself, and we're also going to be seeing this hardware, or at least similar hardware, in the rumoured Nintendo Switch upgraded console that we keep hearing so much about. Of course, this is all speculation and they could not be doing an updated shield at all, but this is not by, not by far from the first time we have actually heard this particular rumour, so I wouldn't be surprised if Nvidia do have something planned. I would hope it's something a bit more exciting than just a minor refresh with the same hardware. Um, but it's entirely possible it's just going to be like a design change or something like that to try and attract people, but perhaps a bit of a price cut. So we're going to finish things up with a bit of an update regarding Shenmue 3 now. Now you may recall my video not too long ago, a few days ago in fact, where I mentioned the fact that at least at the time of recording, Yeastnet were not giving people who backed the game on Kickstarter refunds due to the fact that they were unhappy with the Epic Game Store exclusivity, despite the fact that people were arguing, no, I backed you so I could get a Steam key, I don't, I'm not getting a Steam key, I don't want Epic Games key, and there's been even talk of a class action suit rumbling around the interwebs. So, even outside of that, the controversy surrounding this has been quite palpable, I've spoke a lot about the controversies with the Epic Game Store, and apparently Yeastnet, alongside with the publisher Deep Silver and Epic, actually issued a joint statement on the Kickstarter page itself. So, this statement is a bit strange, to be honest, but let's, just, let's go with the statement and then we can discuss why I believe it's a little bit strange. And they said, quote, We want to make sure that backers are aware we are listening to their concerns. We kindly ask all our fans to have some patience. We are currently at E3 demoing the game. We need to get back to our respective offices to assess the situation and together find a way forward to justify the trust you place in us. Now, I don't think they're going to pull out of the deal with Epic because they've undoubtedly signed a contract and maybe even already taken money from Epic. Obviously, that's pure speculation. Whether or not they've taken money, I have no idea. But they most likely have signed some sort of contract if they have announced it publicly, which obviously they have. But what they may be doing is giving Steam keys to people who backed it on Kickstarter and for everyone else, they have to buy it on Epic. I mean, as people, I'll include the link to the uh, Kickstarter update in my description below this video, and you'll see the comments bring up some, to be honest with you, very fair points, like the very top comment is that they got a confirmation for Steam, and there's even been people bring up the fact that the original Kickstarter page mentioned a physical PC disc, which obviously is probably not going to happen if it's only coming out on the Epic Games Store at least for some time. So, I would not expect them to cancel the deal. I don't think anyone's going to be willing to do that, but what we, again, what we may see is the people who backed it on Kickstarter get a Steam key and get basically quote-unquote early access to the Steam version and everyone else who has to buy the game will have to buy it through the Epic Games Store until the timed exclusivity period is over. Obviously, they're still working on a solution. This is pure speculation from myself, but that is one option I think they have. That's probably the, one of the very few options they have because I don't think they're going to cancel the deal and not make it exclusive to the Epic Games Store. I just don't see that happening, period, to be quite frank. I mean, I'd love to say that would be the case, but let's be realistic, guys. That's not going to happen, most likely. I mean, I'm, I've got no inside information or anything like that, so I could very much be wrong, and I'm probably be having some... Uh, 
I'm a foot in my mouth if it turns out that actually they're going to scrap the whole thing, but I'd be surprised if that happens, let's just put it that way. So, other than my suggestion that I just said, what do you think they could actually be planning to try and win back some of the goodwill they have undoubtedly lost with this? I mean, if they're not going to allow people to get a Steam version, they should probably offer refunds. Because I definitely think, and this is kind of from a not a lawyer perspective, could you keep in mind that a lot of people, these people do have a leg to stand on when it comes to them arguing, look, I backed you on the basis of X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z is no longer being offered, so I'd like my money back, please. Like, that is literally the law in England. So, you know, obviously in the US, a bit different. But it's going to be interesting to watch nonetheless, regardless of how it turns out. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything I've discussed in the video. Uh, in, the, in the comments below as always your support and comments are highly appreciated thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye